Okay, so now I want to show you uh, RDS or Relational Database Service. So go to the top here, type in RDS, and we'll make our way over there. And so RDS is great because it allows us to launch relational databases. Um, sometimes the UI is slow. I'm not sure why it's taking so long to load today, but every day is a bit different. And so what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new database. Uh, you're going to notice that we're going to have the option between creating a standard or easy. I stick with standard just because I don't like how easy hides a lot of stuff from us. Even here, like it says two cents per hour, but it's not giving us the full cost. So I really don't trust it because if you go down here and you chose their dev test here, look, it's like a hundred dollars. It's not showing the, the, the cost preview right now, maybe because we didn't choose the database type. Sorry. I wanted to choose Postgres. But before we do that, let's look at the engine types we have. Amazon Aurora. So we have between MySQL and Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, Postgres, Oracle, Microsoft SQL. Notice for uh, Microsoft SQL, it comes with a license. You don't have to do anything with that. It might change based on the addition here. Uh, nope, comes with a license for all of them, which is great. Uh, if you wanna bring your own license, that's where you need a dedicated host, right? Running uh, Microsoft SQL. For Oracle, uh, you have to bring your own license. That's gonna be based on um, importing with the AWS License Manager. But if we go over to Postgres, which is what I like to use, uh, we're gonna set it to dev test to try to get the cheapest cost. Scroll down, look, $118. We can get it cheaper. We get it super cheap. So here are the passwords gonna be testing, one, two, three, a capital on the T, so and an explanation mark on the end, okay, because it has a bunch of requirements of what it wants. Here I want a T2 micro. So I'm just gonna scroll down here. What is going on here? Standard, oh, look, M classes. I don't want an M class, I want a burstable class. That's the cheap ones. And so we go here, can we still do a T2 micro or is it now T3? So I don't see T2. So I imagine a T3 micro must be the new AWS free tier. So we go AWS free tier here, right? And if I go to, Databases, um, RDS on the T2 micro 750 hours, but I can't select it. So I'm gonna assume that the T3 micro must be the new tier if it's not there, right? Unless it's saying include previous generations and then maybe I can see it then. Okay, so I don't see it there. I really don't like how they've changed this on me. Okay, so the oldest I can choose is a T3 micro, which is fine. I just I just know T2 being the free tier, that's all. Uh, this is fine. We don't want auto scaling turned on for our example here. We do not want a multi AZ, so do not create a standby. That's gonna really jump up our cost. We don't need public access. It will create a VPC, that is fine. Password authentication is fine. We have to go in here, which I don't know why they just don't keep that expanded because you always have to come in here, name your database. So my database, we choose our Postgres version here. I'm gonna turn backups off uh, because if we don't, if we don't, it's gonna take forever to launch this thing. Encryption is turned on, you can turn it off, but generally it's not uh, recommended. We can have performance insights turned on. I'm gonna turn the retention Oh, we'll leave it to seven days because we can't turn that off. We don't need enhanced monitoring, so I'm just going to turn that off. And uh, that's fine. We're not going to enable delete protection here. And so we are good. We can now go ahead and create our database. And what we'll do here is wait for that database to be created. So the thing is, is like, if we're doing the solutions architect or the de developer associate stuff, I'd actually show you how to connect to the database. Um, it's not that hard to do. Like you just have to connect, uh, grab all the database uh, information. So it's gonna have an endpoint, a port, stuff like that. And you use something like table plus or something to connect to the database, but that's out of scope of the certified cloud practitioner. I'm just going through the motions to show you that you can create uh, an RDS database very easily, but not how to connect to it and actually utilize it, okay? And so that would spin up and we would have a server. And after that, we can just go ahead and delete the server here. So I'm just say, delete me, okay? And that's all there really is to it. There is the special type of um, database, like Aurora doesn't have its own like console page. It's part of RDS. So if you wanna spin up Aurora, you just choose the compatibility you want. 
you can choose between provisioned or serverless. Um, and serverless is supposed to be really good for um, scaling to zero cost. So that's something there. So you fill that all out, but the initial cost is a lot more expensive. You can't choose a T2 micro here um, unless it lets you now. It is for provisioned. It's uh, oh, T2, T3 medium is the smallest you can go. Okay, so if you reach the point where you're using a, a medium sized database, then you might consider moving over to Aurora just because it's going to be highly scalable, etc., like that. Um, so that's a consideration there. There's also something called Babelfish um, that uh, it was announced last year when I when I uh, shot this, um, or when I'm shooting this as of now. And the idea was to make it compatible with MySQL SQL Server to migrate over to Aurora PostSQL, which is kind of interesting. Um, but that's about it. So if our database is destroying, I think it is, I'm just gonna go back over here to RDS. Uh, it's taking a long time to load today. And uh, I think it's already deleted. Maybe we go to databases here. It's deleting. So I'm confident it's going to delete. So there we go.